Hi, it's Vanessa, the Crafty Gemini, and this week I'm back with the next installment of our video quilt along, which is arranging blocks and sashing. After our quilt blocks are trimmed to size, we then want to arrange them to see if we have an even distribution of design, color, or just whatever overall design you want to end up with your layout. So what I suggest is that you set up some kind of a design wall like I have here. Now this is nothing fancy. If you don't have the space on a large enough wall in your house or where you're at, just go ahead and lay it down on a bed and you can kind of get the similar idea. But if you do have an opportunity to put up a wall, it's even better. Because this way I can literally take a few steps back and look at how the finished quilt will look. And that way seeing it all standing up like that on a wall, I can get a better idea of the color distribution that I have going on. So what I did to create this design wall is I just took a piece of inexpensive, this is polyester batting, and I just push pinned it into my wall. I put a couple pins on the sides and across the top and that's it. And what happens is that because the batting is like nice and fluffy like that, it creates friction with the fabric on your quilt blocks. I don't have any adhesive on here, no pins, nothing. You just take your block, you put it on your batting, and you smooth it out. Now batting is not the only um, material that you can use to create this design wall. You can also use cotton batting, a mix of cotton poly, you can use felt, anything that has this type of a texture to it. And if you want, you can just take some scraps of fabric with you to the fabric store and just play around. Maybe you'll find something on a roll that's really inexpensive or on sale. Just put it up to it. And if the fabric sticks to it without a lot of effort, then chances are that's going to be a pretty decent material for you to use as your design wall. Also with these push pins, you can just use this maybe in your living room or dining room area when you are ready to lay out your blocks to create your quilts. You can just push it into the wall and I think they leave small enough holes that if you were to take it down, um, you, nobody would really know that those holes were there. So this is a great option for you to use in a guest room or anything like that. You don't have to have it up permanently in a studio. Just gives you an option for you to create your layout of your quilt blocks before you get ready to sew them together. Now for arranging our blocks, you want to set it up somewhere either like this. You can even put them down on the floor or on a bed just so you can look at the color distribution and the shape and, and design distribution of what you want to end up with the finished look of your quilt. Now if I had, for example, this block here, you can see they're the same color, so I probably would not leave that there because it's drawing your eye too much into this area since these color values are almost identical. So with this design wall, I can just take my block off, put this one all the way up here, and you can see I'm not using any adhesive. You just put the fabric there and smooth it out. So once you figure out how you want your layout to be, then it's time to start discussing sashing. Now here I have for you an example of sashing. If you don't know what it is, this is the sashing part. They're simply these little strips of fabric that go in between it and they serve as a way of framing out your quilt blocks. Usually you use this, I mean you can use it in any quilt, whatever design you want to do, but you'll see it a lot in these sampler quilts. This is another sampler quilt similar to the one that we're making in our video quilt along because we're sampling from different block designs. So they're not all the same, every single block is different. This one you can see has embroidery and this is one of my black and white ones for my black and white quilt along. I have a few more friendship stars there just switched up in colors. And so what we do is instead of bumping them all together because everything will kind of look a little muddy if the designs are too different, especially with these busy fabrics, you won't really be able to tell what each individual block is. So we decide to put in sashing. Sashing here in this quilt, we cut two and a half inch wide strips. So once they're sewn in with a quarter inch on each side, that's gonna take away half an inch. Meaning your finished sashing strips are going to measure two inches wide. And so you can see how much more this adds to the quilt. You can just by adding these strips in between your blocks and in between the rows, it will add a significant amount of size to your quilt, right? These blocks are the same as ours. They finish 12 inches sewn in. So 12 times four, if I would have bumped up all the blocks together, this would have measured 48 inches across. But because I have these sashing strips in between at two inches, there's five, that's added a whole 10 more inches to my quilt. So instead of 48 inches wide, it's now 58 inches wide. So you can see that you can do that without creating more blocks, but it will add more volume to the size of your finished quilt. In this quilt, I went ahead and cut out little red cornerstones instead of doing full black strips. But for the purposes of this video quilt along, we're just gonna do simple strips across. So if you do wanna do it, know that you'll just need one fabric for your sashing. This is just gonna be a little simpler for beginners. It's gonna be a lot less math for you to do, and it's gonna be a lot easier for you to piece. So I've arranged all my blocks how I want the finished layout to look and now I'm playing around with the sashing. I've chosen a few different fabrics 
And after I put this one up here, I've decided this is the color I'm going to use. It's a really light pale blue. All my blocks are really bright and cheery, and so I thought that this nice pastel type color would go nicely instead of just using a plain white. And so what I've done here is I've cut out a strip, the little ones that are going to go on both sides of each of our quilt blocks, and it measures two and a half inches wide. This can be any width that you want, but for the purposes of this quilt alone, we'll keep it at two and a half. And then the length here is the length of my finished quilt block. So when you trim down your blocks, whatever you trim them down to, that's the length you want it to be by the two and a half. Okay, so two and a half by the length of your finished block. And these I cut out at two and a half inches wide, and I use the width of the fabric to cut the strip out. When it comes to the strips of sashing that are going to go in between your rows of blocks, it's going to be a little different because, as you may already know, the width of your fabric off these cotton type fabrics measures only between 40 to 44 inches, okay? And as you can see, I have four blocks going across. It, just like I showed you in the other quilt with two inch sashing in between once it's finished, it's going to end up being 58, which is a lot longer or wider than the width of my fabric which means that the strips that I cut for here need to be cut on the length of the fabric and not the width, okay? So instead of getting, let's say, half a yard and thinking that that's going to be enough for these strips, I need to get it to be at least a 58 inches long, okay? 58 inches worth of fabric for me to cut out these strips in so that they'll be continuous, right? You can do them this way, but what you're going to end up with down here is a strip that needs to be pieced in your sashing. I don't like the look of not having a continuous strip for sashing unless you did something like what I did in the other quilt with the cornerstones and broke it up that way. But for here, we're just gonna use one continuous strip. So you wanna make sure that if you're lining up your blocks like I have here, four by three, if you do have just 12 blocks, the strips that are going in between the rows need to be one continuous strip. Now, if this is your first time doing sashing on a quilt, this is a great way to kind of put everything up on display before you start cutting into your fabric so you know exactly what you'll need. An example would be right here. I've already cut out all my thin strips, the ones that go in between the blocks, and I've come back here to my design wall and put them into place. Now for the strips that go across, remember I said you're going to need at least a 58 inches long of fabric. And you want to make sure that before you cut your fabric, you come and depending on your size or how big your quilt blocks are, that you actually measure this so you can make sure that you cut a strip at least that size or a little bit bigger. Because what happens is we have a strip here that's, remember, the length is exactly the length of your finished quilt block. So that's going to be sewn up to right there. Then the next thin strip that's on this side of this block is going to start right at the top of that block. So you cannot calculate the strips that go in between the rows to start measuring from the edge of your quilt block. You want to make sure that you're accounting for this extra two and a half inches here because it needs to start from this end because we have these two individual strips right here. So you want to then measure from here all the way from here to the end on to the end of the other thin strip that's on the right side of the last block on that row as well. Okay, so before you cut into your fabric, make sure that you're accounting for the bit here and the bit on the other end as well. So now let's do some math. We need 12 and a half inch strips, or just about somewhere there, for each one on so that there's one on each side of our block. So we're gonna need one, two, three, four, five, and that's gonna be times three, right? So we're gonna need 15 strips that measure two and a half inches wide by the 12 and a half inches long. Now if we're calculating that straight from yardage, say we cut one strip that measures two and a half inches wide by the width of the fabric, which I said is about 40 to 44 inches. We'll say 40 just to make sure we have enough fabric. 12 and a half times three is gonna give you about 37 and a half inches, and that's close enough. We're obviously not gonna get another cut from there. So we'll say you can get three of these strips out of each two and a half inch wide strip by the width of the fabric. So if we have 15 that we need, and we can get three from one strip, that tells us that we're going to need five strips that measure two and a half inches wide by the width of the fabric. So if we're getting fabric yardage off of a bolt, two and a half times five is 12 and a half inches. So 12 and a half inches is what you'll need from the fabric. So 12 and a half by whatever the width of the fabric is. Meaning that with a little bit more than a third of a yard, we'll be able to cut out the individual little strips that are going just on the sides. So say get 15 inches just to be safe, or you can even just go with a half of a yard and you'll be plenty safe, right? And that's just going to account for the little strips that we need in between. Now when it comes to the sashing strips that are going in between the rows, remember that we can't use the width of the fabric because it's not wide enough. So we'll need to get fabric that measures as far as the length of the fabric off the bolt needs to be at least 
what the 58 inches that we're going to need here. So it can reach from one end, including the sashing strips on both sides at the ends, okay? Needs to reach all the way across. So I would say go with 62, 65 inches, something like that. So as a rough estimate, I would say get two yards of the fabric that you'll want to make your sashing. If you're just using these 12 blocks in a similar layout that I have here, and you'll have plenty both to do the longer strips that go in between the rows and for the smaller strips that go in between the quilt blocks. And then once you're done with this, if you did want to go ahead and add a border to your quilt, you can do that then afterwards, after you're done sewing all the sashing on, and it would really be in the same process. You would cut a strip wide, as wide as you want your border to be, and then you can sew it across the top and the bottom, and then on the two sides, or an opposite, the two sides first, and then top and bottom. So now, to sew these together, all you would have to do is, I would start with the thinner strips, and start sewing them together to create one full row. Remember to use that scant quarter inch seam allowance until you get this full row, and I would repeat that with each row. After I have the rows done, then I would go back and sew the longer wide strips to the entire full row because it's the same length, and it would go together pretty easy. So just get your continuous strip, then you would put it simple, the same way we do everything, pretty sides touching, and you sew it across with that scant quarter inch seam allowance until you get your finished quilt top. And that's it for today. I think I've covered plenty of material for one lesson and I've given you a lot of homework to catch up on. So I'll see you guys in two weeks when I'm back with the next installment of the video Quilt Along. We'll be squaring up our quilt top and getting it ready for quilting. Remember, after you're done putting on your sashing strips on, you want to then take a few measurements of your quilt, both in the length and the width measurements, and you want to purchase a piece of batting that measures at least two to four inches larger than the quilt top size on all four sides. So on the left and the right, and on the top and the bottom. You wanna have the batting be bigger than your quilt top. And as far as batting goes, you can really purchase any kind of batting that you want, but if this is your first quilt, I would definitely recommend sticking with a thinner loft, like a low loft, which is a thinner batting, and I would definitely stick to something like 100% cotton or an 80-20 cotton polyester blend just because it's your first quilt and you definitely want it to last a long time. I'll also include some links in the video description box below of the batting that I prefer to use in my quilts in case you don't have any idea where to start. And remember to take those pictures of your finished quilt tops with the sashing strips in place and upload them to my Facebook page because I definitely want to see how far you've come along in this video quilt along. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and hit it with a thumbs up and feel free to share it across the different social media sites. See you guys next time and thanks for watching.